Okay, our next topic is the uh, hyperspectral and LiDAR data fusion. I'll start with the hyperspectral imagery. So hyperspectral imagery is auto-rectified. So you want to remove the effects of image perspective, uh, sometimes referred to as tilt, and then relief, which are terrain effects. Um, coming from the variation of the crown elevation of the Earth. So in order to do that, you need to have as an input an image, which is very having very accurate sensor geometry, which means accurate GNSS IMU unit. You also need to have an accurate elevation model of the crown surface. Different type of ground elevation models are, for example, digital elevation model, which represents the bare earth elevations. Then there is a DSM, which is digital surface model, which includes the first surface elevations. Um, this is typically coming from LiDAR. We'll discuss a bit more about that on coming slides. Uh, there are some sources for crown elevation, public sources, which are SRTM, uh, so-called shuttle radar topographic mission, which is rather coarse, um, typically 30 meters or 90 meters. Then there's Aster Global DM. It's also coarse, 90 meters mo in most of the locations, 30 meters in USA. This world DM, which will give you a bit more accurate uh, DM from 1 to 30 meters, depending on the area. There are also global LiDAR data sources, which are unfortunately not available everywhere, but provide a bit more accurate um, resolutions for the DM. Then uh, the customer's own LiDAR data is the most accurate source, typically one meter or even sub-meter resolutions, and that's suitable for, for um, uses with the drone type systems. So what is a LiDAR? This is by no means a thorough explanation of the technology, so it's, it's very simplified illustrations for it. So LiDAR means light detection and ranging. The device uses laser pulses to measure the distances that uh, uh, using the pulses that strike and reflect from the features on the surface of the Earth. So it converts the scanning angle and the distance from sensor information into the georeferenced data points. And it collects typically hundreds or thousands of positions per second into something called a point cloud. A single pulse may strike several features causing multiple returns, uh, which are reflected pulses. So for example, in here, when the laser pulse hits the uh, tree, the first reflectance comes from the top, then there may be additional reflectance from the side, and then finally uh, reflection uh, from the crown surface. So these uh, 3D point clouds are typically huge. Uh, they are colored by height and, and reflect pulses from the crown, roads, buildings, power lines, tree canopy, you name it. One of the typical products is that it maps the bare earth beneath the vegetation. So how do you use the LiDAR data? Uh, high resolution bare earth surface or DM is one of the most typical ones. Uh, you can have roads, structures and other surface features included. Um, the, uh, on vegetation applications, you get the canopy closer and structure and tree and stand heights. So typical LiDAR data products on, on so-called LiDAR language, if you like. Bare earth surface, which is the high resolution DEM. Highest heat surface, which is the high resolution DSM. And then the raw point cloud, which is basically a 3D visualization. And for specific applications like forestry, you can get additionally first order derivatives like um, canopy height, cover or density, and some additional forest inventory parameters. 
It's important to realize that LiDAR alone cannot classify all species. So the hyperspectral imaging can do that. So LiDAR assists by adding more spatial details, both horizontally and vertically, improving the accuracy of the classification. Typically, some sophisticated algorithms like support vector machine, extreme learning machine, random forestry are used together with EPs for data fusion. EP is extinct profile, which is basically a collection of specific feature sets. Then a simple example for uh, hyperspectral and LiDAR data fusion. Uh, this is a forestry application. So you first create a digital surface model from LiDAR data and resample that the same resolution with hyperspectral data. Uh, then you use that for auto-rectification of the hyperspectral data. You classify the targets using whatever methods you like, then create tree lists uh, with associated spectra for each uh, tree and assign species to individual trees. And you overlay the hyperspectral data on surface model for illustration, like we see here on, on the um, top right corner. Uh, in forestry application fusion data, uh, you can use that, for example, for estimation of tree height and volume, species identification distribution, uh, biomass, uh, three health conditions, and then, for example, stress related to insect attacks on an individual tree level, which is very important application for some specific area. 